On this 2006 Hummer H3, we're going to review and install part number RM-154, the Roadmaster Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit. With this part number, this is what you get. This is our main wire harness right here that goes to the front to the back of the vehicle. We have this little cord here that will go between your RV and a towed vehicle. You get a length of wire loom to help protect the wires around corners or simply just hide the colors of the wires when they're visible. And you get four diodes. These diodes is what separates the vehicle's wiring harness from the input from the RV. It does come with the terminal ends to hook up the wires to and some buck connectors to make splices as well. It comes with some zip ties and also a ring terminal for ground. However, you notice one of them has a yellow terminal. This is be a good one to use for your running light circuit because your running light circuit from your RV will go into this terminal here and this, and this terminal is actually big enough to handle two wires so it'll jump over to the next one on the other side of the vehicle. Now these diodes are rated for a maximum amperage of 85 amps and a max voltage of 24 volts. So this is more than adequate for a simple 12 volt systems vehicles use for tail light lighting. All right, next we'll go ahead and show you how we install the wire harness on our H3. To install our wire harness, we need to get access to the wiring right behind the taillights. So for us, we'll go ahead and open up the back gate and we'll go ahead and remove the taillights. We'll go ahead and remove these two screws so we can take off the guard for a light. We'll use a small Phillips head screwdriver for this. Okay. Then we can go ahead and remove the light. So we'll go ahead and find our running light circuit first. We'll go ahead and turn on the running lights and test our wire. I'm going to use a simple light tester. Take the ground clamp and we'll go to the latch here. We'll go ahead and test our wire. We got a running light circuit on. So it looks like our brown wire is going to be for running lights. We'll go ahead and cut our wire in half and strip it back and we'll get it ready to add a diode. Strip the wires back about a quarter inch. Twist the wires to make it more compact. We take it up, we just grab one of the diodes took the terminals off, we'll go ahead and slide it on and crimp it into place. We'll grab a diode, doesn't matter which one. All that matters is that our output goes out to our tail light. Slide it onto the terminal. And then our input, doesn't matter which one, we'll slide right there. So now our vehicle basically is back to stock. And then this input will be from our RV. We'll add that on later. Now at this point, it may help to label them as well as you install. So we'll just make this a T for tail lights. We'll go ahead and turn on the right turn signal, test the wire. And looks like blue is our turn signal. So we'll go ahead and add a diode just like we did before. That'll be a right turn. Let's go ahead and work for wire harness now. Now it has two four pole ends, they're identical. So we have to remove one of them so it doesn't really matter. We'll take our wire harness with the four pole end, drop it down below, and let it fall down to the ground. And we'll basically pull the vast majority of it through. Now on this side we're only gonna need three wires. Our white wire, which we'll attach later, brown for a running light circuit, green for a right turn signal. Yellow will go over to the left hand side. We won't work with that so we can just cut that short for now. So just like before, we'll go ahead and strip our wires back and get them ready. And our white wire, we'll get the small ring terminal. All right, let's go ahead and hook up to our diodes. Tail light circuit, we'll get our brown wire. Our green wire will be our right turn signal. White wire, will peel back a little bit. We'll run that to ground, which will be the sheet metal behind the taillight. Now we'll use a self-tapping screw. It doesn't come with the kit. It'll be a number eight size that uses a quarter inch nut driver. I'll go ahead and add my screw first, then my wire. Take a moment to go ahead and seal up some of the ends on our terminals with some electric tape. At this point, we can go ahead and put our light back on for good. Okay. 
we'll go ahead and show you how it ran our wire over to the other side. It will be going over to the driver's side taillight. Basically came out of the pocket there, went up and over the frame, followed the wire harness here, and zip tied it where we could. There were some existing holes in the frame that we could use, and ran back over the top of the frame here. To remove our driver's side taillight, we have to open up the door all the way, and we get access to these two screws. Once again, Phillips head screwdriver. Now you may want to have an extra set of hands outside if your vehicle has a guard to help, help catch it before it falls off. Okay, we'll take our wire harness and run it up from the bottom up to our wires here. We'll take all our slack from right turn wire and we'll go ahead and just zip tie it to our factory wires here for now. All right, let's go ahead and take a moment and split up our wires. Now I'll go ahead and test our wires. We took my, the ground for my tester, I actually ground it to the exhaust tip. And looks like our brown wire is a running light circuit again. So we'll go ahead and get that ready and add our diode. Same thing as before, out to our taillight and our input. Blue looks like our turn signal again for left hand side. So let's go ahead and add our diode there. Okay, let's go ahead and work for a wire harness now. We'll go ahead and cut off the yellow wire. We'll make sure to work with the end that goes towards the front of a vehicle. Our yellow wire, we'll go to our left turn. Let's work with our running light diode. Remember, it has to be shared. This brown wire has to be go run both sides. So we'll go ahead and cut this wire in half. Strip the wires back. Twist them up and then twist them together and we'll use the yellow terminal end as a junction and also go to our diodes. Take our two wires, join together, and then they'll go into our diode here. With these connections made, we'll go ahead and put our light back up into place. Okay, we'll open the door back up so we can put the guard back around the light. Next, we need to go ahead and run our four pole wire up towards the front of the vehicle. To do that, basically we just stayed along the top of frame rails best we could, along with the factory wire harness. Here's a wire that goes back up on, over the top of the frame. Stayed over top of the, sh the shock here. And there's a piece of a wire harness we zip tied to. And we just route it up over the top of the frame and stayed on it until we got over to this cross member here. Then we started zip tying it off. Every so often, on the way up towards the front here. Okay, now we'll take our wire and we'll fold it up and push it up towards the front. And this vehicle is pretty easy. We just kind of aimed towards this corner of the engine compartment and was able to reach down pretty far and grab the wire and pull it up. Now it's a good idea to bring the wire up into the engine compartment for at least a short distance because when you add a supplementary braking system to the vehicle, when you tow it behind your RV, some of them need access to this wires. So it's nice to have easier access on top than it is in crawling underneath the vehicle. We'll route this towards the front and take a four pole, route that back down towards the base plate. To get our wire down behind the bumper here and around this area, we'll go ahead and temporarily take down the rock shield. There's uh, four screws, typically, and you want to use a 13 millimeter socket to remove them. We'll take the shield down, bring the wires out, and then put the shield back up. All right, once we have a wire brought up, we'll bring it around We'll go underneath this tube right here. We'll go ahead and drop this down. Here's a wire right here. We're going to tuck it up behind the bumper just for now. And put away our excess. I think we'll mount our four pole right here. We'll just simply use some existing holes that are in the brace right here. Now I'm going to leave a little bit of bundled extra wire down here for a future upgrade if, if it ever gets changed to a different type of connector. Cut off our excess zip ties. Tuck our back wire back up safely. And we go ahead and put the rock shield back up into place. Okay. Let's go ahead and zip tie our, our excess wire in the engine compartment up. Okay. 
All right, let's go ahead and close the hood. With all our electrical connections made, let's go ahead and try it out. We'll apply power to our wires and see how they work. First, we'll go ahead and try out our running light circuit, our left turn signal, and then our right turn signal. And our brake signal, we know it will work because the same things as turn signals, but they just stay on. And with that, that'll finish it for part number RM-154 from Roadmaster on this 2006 Hummer H3.